Good morning, Moms and Master Books. Hey, it's Teaching Tips Thursday. Um, I got my uh, bare wall behind me, but uh, hopefully we'll be finishing up. We're doing a lot of remodeling here at the press, and um, there's a lot of, uh, we're moving people and moving departments and trying to work in some new processes to improve um, uh, the production process and, and put teams together. It's, it's really exciting. So, um, but until then, uh, here I am. So uh, let's talk today about individualized education and educating the individual needs of the student. Now, everything I'm gonna to say today is kind of my two cents and my educational philosophy. Um, I, I think that there's a lot of room for other interpretations and other thoughts, but I'm just gonna give you my two cents as, as a, um, uh, just something to think about. Eat the meat, spit out the bones if it doesn't mean anything to you. But if you um, let me know in the comments if you agree, if maybe even you disagree, and you think that um, I need to be wiser in my approach. So uh, when we talk about this individualizing education, one thing I would like to be careful of is what I am not talking about is doing less, okay? That um, I think we have to be careful. There's a balance between um, working smarter, so the 80-20 rule, right? 80% uh, of results come from the top 20% of the things we do, and so we want to make sure that we do um, our 20% wisely. What we don't want to do is just reduce everything down to the point where we dumb it down so far that we're not we're not actually attaining anything. And I think we have to be careful of that because sometimes in homeschooling, the path of least resistance is to continually do less. And I think it's good to be smart about um, making sure that what we do is wise, but just doing less uh, isn't going to help our children succeed. Education, the goal of education should not be just to educate for the sake of education, right? It should be, to educate, um, to prepare our children to be successful in life. And I think it's important, we've talked about it in the past, but I think it's important that we actually define how, um, what that means. What do, what do I want to achieve through the education of my children? Okay, so the education system in and of itself can be very much um, producing square, you know, we have square boxes for square pegs, and as long as you're a square peg, that's fantastic, but every now and then, one of our students tends to be a round peg, and they just don't fit into the standard education model. Um, and so we, we, we want to be able to adapt and be flexible, but what about an overall educational philosophy? How can we begin tailoring that to meet the needs of the student? So, um, I think I'll give you a couple of examples um, that I would I would say. So let's think of a football team or any team, right? But a football team is a great one in particular because you have people on the line who may be three, 350, 375 pounds, and they are they are excellent at stopping people from coming through the line and sacking the quarterback. And and that is a very important role, and they train for that. They train how to get off the line quickly, how to block without holding all of these things. Then you have a running back in the back, and they're faster. They're, they're more agile. They're, they, they, they have the ability to get up the field quickly, but they're not necessarily as good as blocking big guys coming through the line. Each of them have a skill set and, and, um, and a capability that are well suited to the positions they play. I think it's important for each of those players, if you're on the line, you're the center who passes the ball back to the quarterback, it's important that you understand all the other positions on the team and how you relate to that. If you're the running back who, who grabs the ball and tries to go through the line, it's important as well that you understand each person's role on the team, how they're protecting you, what they're going to do for each play, understanding how the whole picture works, even though you're specializing in a very niche role. And I think education is that way too. It's, we, 
we can be okay so so let's bear that in mind so i have a son who has graduated and when he was in school he was extremely wise like he he could do just about anything he was good academically and all of that but he really excelled in the mechanics like he just loved mechanical things he loved being outdoors working with his hands if he and i could go and buy tools he was like over the moon just like that um funny story about him we had an old building i probably told this but we had an old building and uh, there was a circular saw he was cutting it hit a rough spot in the floor bounced up cut his leg open opened him right up in the hospital uh as they were stitching him all back up Kristen was in with him it took a lot of stitches because he was cut right down almost to the bone um and and it was it was probably six to eight inches that he was opened up um he never never cried never said a thing until Kristen said no more circular saws and the moment that happened then he started to cry because the thought of not having a circular saw was far worse than losing a leg so that's who he was and and he and i i would we would go on craigslist and we would find um snow blowers lawn mowers small engines anything like that and he'd negotiate a deal with them he'd call them say i'll give you 20 bucks for it we'd drive an hour pick it up bring it home he'd tear it all apart clean it up put it back together um, tune it up you know paint it and then put it back on the market for a lot more than what he paid for it and he did this um he still does it just for fun that was who he was okay so so in that process, we were able to add to his education and narrow it down, but we didn't take away from the broadness of his education. So it wasn't just, oh, he's a mechanic, so now he has no need for math, science, other languages. He has no need to understand other cultures and history because he's just going to be good with a wrench. Um, I think we do a disservice for that. And so we have to be careful of that because sometimes it's easy to just be like, well, it's going to be a struggle to get my kid to learn how to write. So why do that? Um, I'm going to just have them focus on, on what they're good at and the niches. And the problem we have is we have to realize that our kids are going to be exposed to a lot of culture. And so a well-rounded education gives them access to understanding. I, under, I, I study history so that I understand other cultures, other people groups. I understand how I got here. We understand the mistakes of the past, strategies, um, names that may come up. We study science so we have an awareness of the world, the physical world around us. Uh, we study math so we understand relationship and logic and reason. We study writing and communication so that we can communicate our ideas effectively. All of these things, we still want our students to have a well-rounded education. Think of it like a funnel where we, we go real wide as, and as they get older, they have large range of experience and exposure to experiences, but then we narrow it down into the niche. There's a lot of different philosophies when it comes to business and success and that type of thing that says, um, you know, some people will say, well, you want to you want to work on your weaknesses. You want to make your weaknesses stronger. I personally think you want to make your you want to focus on your strengths and play to your strengths. And so if you're that center who's a big guy who is capable of holding back the line, then you should be a center. You shouldn't attain to be the running back who needs to be quick and agile and get up the field quickly if that's not the way you're wired and built. So I think when you look at a team concept, I need to have a well-rounded education so I have an awareness of, um, of what the world around me is and I can relate to other people, but then I can focus on the niches that make me unique to who I am. All right, so hopefully that makes some sense I, over the years we've watched people kind of go into an unschooling mode or just be very narrowly focused and then do a disservice because they're not giving almost think of like the renaissance man type concept i want my son and my son my son can cook amazing he does you know he does this, he hunts he cooks he's mechanical but he also um can participate in in you know he he understands 
uh, finer things as well. And he's had a lot of experience and exposure and he can communicate with different people because even in a company, he now works for a, a manufacturing company and he has exposure to supervisors, to salespeople that come in, any all these different people that are in and out of his life, and he can converse with them and build relationships. He can network and he can communicate his ideas effectively because he does have that well-roundedness. So we his his um, his overall education gives him the ability to connect with people from all over but his niche that we focused on was more hands-on and mechanical um, so hopefully that that makes some sense um, i think playing to our strengths you know the world that we're in is becoming very niche and so uh having a lot of skills like it used to be that on the corner of Main Street, you would have a general store and the general store would have a little bit of, of everything. Well, now the world makes it so that you have a niche. And so I can actually, if I, if I appreciate bow ties, um, then I could open a bow tie store. I could have a physical location and an online location. I could sell through different channels like Amazon and, and, and different retailers and, and, and aggregate sites. Um, I could sell, you know, eBay and all the different places that now I have access to and I can just be the best um, bow tie provider in the world and I have access to people you know Main Street if all I did was worried about bow ties there might be one person in a community that would wear a bow tie and so I would starve to death but in the global marketplace that we serve I can focus on just the niche and be very successful just selling bow ties. And that's, that's the change in culture. But I, even in selling bow ties, I need to have an awareness and a, the ability to communicate and understand and reason and all of these things that are so important to being part of a citizen. I know this almost sounds scary, but being part of a citizen in a global community, which we are, we all are now connected globally to people all over the world. We have homeschool families, I'm sure, that are even watching that are in other parts of the world. And so we no longer are just community-based, we are now globally-based and, and the world is changing. Now it's my individual skills that make me unique. Nobody would be wise to ask me to be an accountant because the details kill me, but ask me to be forward thinking in marketing and there's a skill that I'm very good at and enjoy the niches on. So in this wide range of experience, I want to I want to first set my education model so that there's there's enough to to give them a wide range. But then what you begin to see with your kids is little I call them little flare ups of energy where all of a sudden you just see they took a little project and they just spent a little more time with it or their eyes lit up or they got a little bit more excited doing it. They invested themselves. Uh, maybe in their playtime, you see them doing it a little bit more. Anything like that, that, that gives them the um, uh, kind of, um, you know, you just notice a little bit of excitement. Okay, so what you can do is just feed it a little bit. With, with it, what I'm talking about, you've got 12, 13 years, plus they got their entire lifetime. You don't have to like nail it on the first time. In marketing, we call it growth hacking. I've talked about it before. You apply a little bit of energy, you see different things, you do a lot of testing, experimenting, and investing yourself. Once you begin to see, like with my son, where all of a sudden I noticed, man, if he could have a hammer, a saw, a wrench, anything in his hand that was mechanical, he would spend hours there. We kind of knew that the direction he was going to go was, was in the mechanics and um, industrial engineering and, and those type of things that, that he would be good for. So now I have another son who enjoys philosophy. He enjoys um, the combat of argument not in a bad way, but he enjoys like good dialogue and debate. He enjoys communication, studying human behavior. His, his bend, like he ended up working for Subway at, right out of, in school and he loved connecting with people. And from there, he actually went into the auto sales business and, and worked in all different parts of dealerships and just loves um, 
people and he loves, you know, learning how to motivate people, how to, how to convince people to purchase, uh, meet customer needs, all of those things. And so we were able to um, kind of give him opportunities to develop and explore more people side of things where mechanical stuff wasn't his niche. So forcing him to be a mechanic wasn't good, but we also gave him exposure to that side so that he did have it in case he met people. Um, <laughs> I know it's almost, yeah, what I'm saying is, you know, the education system is very cookie cutter and it's designed to produce a student who's very, um, you know, very typical. And, and yet there's part of that that we shouldn't throw out because that well-roundedness of education that gives me the ability to communicate about music or art or history, any of these things give me worth because I'm able to communicate with others effectively. Um, even say you're a pastor. Okay, so pastors all the time are telling stories, they're relating to people. I can't tell you the number of times I would walk into a very tense situation, whether it was a funeral, a hospital, a wedding, you name it, there was some situation going on. The first thing I'm looking to do is how can I connect with the people in this room so that they begin to let their guard down and I can minister to them. And, and just being able to say, I've, I've had this experience, or that experience has been helpful. And even our kids, giving them that education helps them, but then it also helps us narrow it down. So we can then begin slowly narrowing down the, um, uh, you know, once we find a few things that are helpful to them, we can begin um, giving them more opportunities to explore that. Uh, we don't typically give outside recommendations in this, but because it's a teaching tip, um, a micro education, something that, that you can do. Uh, I enjoy Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y.com. Um, a lot of times they have like $10 courses that, you know, it's a couple hundred dollar courses, industry experts. Uh, some of my most valuable marketing tips, even like growth hacking and stuff like that, that we implement here at the press has come from courses that I've taken from Udemy. And uh, because I'm not investing a lot you know, they have introductory prices and then prices go up. If you go back from another computer, you can get the lower prices. It's just um, <clears throat> there's so many courses available that you can target. So even if your student is interested in, you know, animals or, or whatever, you're able to, to kind of test the waters a little bit. They have usually live lectures and, and, and handouts and stuff like that. So it's a very affordable way to give training to your student um, or yourself and, and test the waters a little bit and see, is this something, you know, I had a son who said he was interested in programming and so we got him courses in programming and he did for a while, but after about a month of just sitting at the computer and coding from it, and it only cost me, you know, 20 to $30 in courses and he was, he was doing a fantastic job at it, but he realized, man, that's just boring. Like, I don't want to sit there all day doing that. And so it wasn't for him. So I'm not out a lot of money, but the challenge as his dad, and this goes is for, for all my kids, the challenge is I have to be proactive in this. Like I have to actually um, be intentional about giving my kids as many opportunities and exposure to as many experiences and being aware and alert as possible. And that's, you know, that's tough because as a dad, sometimes we just, we got kids and we're going through the stress and there's a stress of life and it's just, oh, you know, I don't have time to, to think about or all of that. And I would just encourage everybody that as parents, that's what we signed up for. We are discipling and we are training. And if you think about, so with my kids, I, I kind of have this vision, right, of, you know, the old arenas, the gladiator arenas. And if I knew that I only had 18 years to prepare my students to step out into the arena, to be able to relate, to defend, to protect, all of these things, and they were going to face all of the challenges, the gladiators, the lions, the, the kings and emperors, and everything that's in that arena, their survival depends upon them stepping through that gate and into the arena. Um, am I doing everything I can to prepare them to step into that place? 
and that we've launched now well, we've launched three fully we're in the process of launching two and 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 you know we still have four more after this um, I'm realizing there really is that moment it's like okay we either did it all right up to this point and we're gonna see them step out and succeed and survive or we're gonna get them we're gonna see them get torn to shreds so rather than being lazy me rather than me being lazy and not intentional and just wishing for the best I want to make sure that I actually have a plan in place to develop my students to step out and play to their strengths and also understand and be aware of um, the culture their place in the culture the relationship that they have to to sensitive topics and debates um, and all of these things. So, uh, I, when we started homeschooling many years ago, and anybody who's been homeschooling for a while, I would think could relate that um, uh, you know homeschoolers had something to prove, and so they they worked really hard to make sure their kids excelled above everybody else. I'm noticing people are getting more comfortable with homeschoolers. And so the criticalness isn't so much there. They're like, well, I know homeschoolers, so-and-so is homeschooled, it's all right. And all of a sudden we have more of a mentality of, um, you know, we don't have to be vigilant in making sure our students receive a quality education. Not true. We actually have to self-govern ourselves and make sure that we're producing students who are game changers and world changers. and they're they're capable of actually stepping into the arena and influencing culture so um let's see the tips for a child who only wants to sit and read literally do nothing else um video games <clears throat> well see there's a lot of psychology about the brain and um, attention spans the triggers reward responses video games are so damaging because they're meant to just tie the brain in and lock it in um, so there's the that's a really complicated question uh, what to do with a student who just wants to sit and read or or play video games um, and again part of my training part of the purpose of training is I have to teach my kids to do things they're not comfortable doing right because as an adult I have to clean the garage, I don't want to. I have to take my car, I have to go through the medical stuff. We have to go through things we don't like, that's part of life. There's, there's things in life I enjoy doing, but that's not all of my life. My life also includes things I don't enjoy doing. And so what I wanna do is make sure that even at, at a very young age, my kids are learning to do the things that they like to do and the things they don't like to do, because that's life. So, um, yeah, so, all right, so, hopefully gives you something to think about and um uh yeah nicole i've made so many mistakes can i can i in experimenting to see if something different will work that scares me have made so many mistakes trial and error as long as we're learning and growing and not repeating those mistakes are they really mistakes if I test something with a student and it doesn't work and I realize, oh, there's a boundary, I can make a line there, we don't ever have to go back there. Is that a mistake or is that just discovering the parameters? Uh, when we put so much pressure on ourselves that we have to be perfect out of the gate and that we have to get it right, and I mean, for heaven's sakes, our kid's more resilient than that, right? Toughen up, kid, you can take it. I mean, for goodness, you, you can do it. Like. They're not going to die because because you made them try a science curriculum that didn't work. It may not be fun for anybody, and you may be out twenty extra dollars or whatever, but it's not the end of the world. And putting that kind of pressure on ourselves, it's just not it's not healthy. And I understand if if different. I'm trying to understand different personality types that aren't as um, open to risk and failure. And, and that type of thing. So um, that may be something that's harder, but I would encourage you that, that the, the taking the approach of growth hacking, right, is I'm looking for the failures. I expect if I, if I try five different things, I'm expecting three of them 
will be failures. We'll do three. Three of them will be failures, and two of them are going to be somewhat successful. So now I know I'll never do this again. I'll never spend money here. I'm not investing as much as if I went full in, but I'm also expecting some level of failure from my attempts. If we build that into our system of thinking with our kids, not everything I do with my kids is going to work, but they're resilient. They're going to survive some of my failures um, as long as they understand what we're working towards is the winning. And we get there by figuring out what's working and what isn't working. So, all right, well, hopefully that gives you something to think about and, um, <laughs> and, and something to work towards that, you know, we do want our kids, we want to work towards the niche, but don't discount the value of, of, a, of a full education. Now, the full education and one size fits all, sometimes in education, the goal becomes just we need to homeschool because we homeschool or we need to do school because we school. That's not. We're training them to be successful, productive citizens in a global market. Okay, so let's talk about another project. Um, I came across this. I've done it myself. I did it this morning with one of my kids. It was awesome. And um, I, think, I think it's just a good way to start looking at ourselves and our kids as individuals. So in the um, in times when men wore armor, they would have armor over their face. So you imagine you're on the battlefield and everywhere you look, men have helmets of steel over their faces. There's no way of identifying um, one man from another. So what they came up with is the concept of heraldry, and it's, it's really pretty fascinating if you study it or look, look it up online, heraldry, and you'll find that what they did is they all had shields, right? Anybody who follows me knows that my handwriting and coordination on a board is awful. So, um, okay, so what we had is, is shields, that we would carry and what men would do is they would create a coat of arms or or a, um, a crest that that they would paint on their shields and as you looked around the battlefield you would recognize oh i know him because i recognize his symbols so like if you do heraldry in your last name um this would be the crests that um goes along with the Pratt name, that would be the three birds, the three diamonds. There's all different intricacies of what, you know, they, you can go as complex as you want with this or, or as um, simple as you want with this. <clears throat> so what I would encourage you to do is a little experiment just for fun. Make a shield on a piece of paper or cut out a shield in a piece of paper and separate it in four quadrants and then come up with symbols that represent who you are, how you want others to see you. So if somebody couldn't see anything, how would they recognize you? Now, obviously for me, a cross would be, um, well, I say obviously, but for me, a cross would be very important. So I want them to recognize the cross. Um, and, uh, um, I value speed uh, in, in the marketplace, in battle, in, in any competitive situation, I value speed. So, um, yeah, don't, don't mock me. Uh, <laughs> I would do a gazelle because to me that represents um, speed and agility. And so... That would be kind of an animal in, in full sprint that would represent that. Um, uh, something else that I might, I might do would be a tree. Uh, and I might even do a tree with nine apples to represent growth and my family, my children, as part of, of, of who I am. And then, um, you know, uh, maybe a sword to represent 
uh, a willingness to do combat and to fight. So uh, now I have, if you were to to evaluate me by symbols, you can see uh, my faith is very important. Growth is very important. Um, I won't back away from a fight. I will defend and and um, take the hills necessary. And um, speed is something that I value uh, as well. And in this process, you could do this multiple times, but it's fun to do is these, these kind of crests. And what you realize is this is actually very defining of who I am as an individual, what makes me unique, um, you know, what skill sets I have, uh, any of that type of thing. And so you begin thinking as an individual. So with your students, doing a little fun project like this of just, hey, let's create a crest. If you were to create a crest just for you or, or for your family, what would you do? How, what, what symbols would you use? And it doesn't have to be set up like that. Sometimes they'll do, you know, one line through and two symbols, whatever works. But just a fun way to start thinking about symbolically, symbolic representations um, of, of who you are, or who your student is, and how they think others would see them if they were on a battlefield looking across and you're, you got your shield, you know, you're, you're ready to go, sword in one hand, shield in the other, and there you see, oh, there's, there's Randy. Uh, and I recognize the symbols that, that he values. So kind of a fun project in, in appreciating the individuality of, of a student. So, okay, well, um, some fun things coming up. Uh, um, we have, there won't be a flash sale next week because it's Thanksgiving week and we don't have enough staff in the warehouse to do fulfillment on flash sales. But the following Monday, nine o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time, um, which is December 2nd, there is a, um, a flash sale that uh, it's, it's scratch and dent. And if you've bought scratch and dent from us, you know that means almost new um, event. And there's, there's a fair amount of product down there ready for that sale. It's first come, first serve. So you want to get right there at 9 a.m. When, when it goes live, because as soon as we sell out, that's it. But I know there's even a lot of curriculum down there this year. Um, and so you can get some good deals on books for Christmas, stocking stuffers, um, purchases for next year. The following week will be an additional 20% off. And um, so that's like one day a year. I'm not announcing the day yet. It'll be announced on, in this group. It'll be announced on Facebook or in, um, yeah, on Facebook page and an email blast as well. But keep an eye out for that and the coupon code for that because that's a really good time also to stock up on any last minute Christmas purchases <clears throat> or maybe even get ahead a little bit on your purchases for the school year. A lot of people took advantage of that last year and did a great job. So, okay. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Good. All right. Well, have a fantastic rest of your week. It's fun to come into the into the Christmas and, and Thanksgiving season, and um, we have so much to be thankful for, and we are so thankful for you guys. Mm -hmm.